Hey, how are you doing? This is Brian Shanley. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy life to consider what I have to say in this particular recording. As a person who there's word out on the street that I'm flirting with the possibility of offering my experience and my skills uh, and, and my services to the taxpayers, voters, and citizens of Minnesota, if they will have me at the ballot box, uh, that's creating an influx of people asking me various questions, especially as it relates to where I stand on the issues uh, of our time period. In 2022, this generation of Minnesotans finds themselves faced with an issue set unlike any other uh, since this state became in existence. And so uh, I'm going to throw down my my ideas here. And here's hoping that something is said that gives you the education necessary to make the most informed decision possible. Um, I have been asked about Minnesota as it relates to its um, status as a welfare state. Uh, and so here's the deal. Minnesota is a generous state. We are generous to a fault. And uh, many people feel that we have become a dumping ground uh, for people who are not from Minnesota coming to Minnesota, not necessarily to share a dream uh, or an invention or something or create a business, but rather as a hustle. What can they take from Minnesota? So instead of coming to give to Minnesota, they come to take from it. And they come from different countries, they come from different states. So if you live in Illinois, you live in California, if I made it to Minnesota, I'd be just fine. And so we become the charity of America, if you will. Um, immediately, the moment I got into some kind of office where I had the ability and the power to say something about that, I would stop that immediately. I would have a policy, which is called the 10-year policy. If you are applying for such things as housing, uh, food benefits, medical benefits, etc., and you're wanting the taxpayers of Minnesota, your fellow citizens, to literally pay your way, um, and you're not a Minnesotan tapping into um, a safety net as a temporary relief to get through a, a stretch of bad luck, uh, but you're literally going to do this for a long period of time, it will be upon you a burden will be placed upon the applicant for such services that you must define, document, demonstrate, and defend the fact that you've been a resident of Minnesota for the last 10 years before your application. Now, what does this mean for kids who are 10 years of age or younger? Well, that would go, that would depend on how their parents would answer that question. So if you're under 10 years old, you obviously haven't been in Minnesota 10 years yet, but if your parents have, then uh, your rights to those things would stem from your parents. If you haven't been here, then your denial of access um, would be because of the, the qualification of your parents. I feel that this is the best way to correct anyone who views Minnesota as a place from which they can come and live a parasitic lifestyle uh, that does harm to the state. Um, we do respect the fact that in many countries right now, there are terrible things happening. And uh, our hearts go out to those people. We stand beside them in prayer. Uh, but with all due respect to those countries, that's their problem. This is Minnesota. We have people from Minnesota, born in Minnesota, raised in Minnesota, or people who have been longtime residents uh, that are in need of uh, the, the, all the help we can give. If I was a family and I had seven children and I was having trouble feeding them, the stupidest thing I could do would say, hey, let's have a few more. If you lack the capacity to take care of the people that are already here, it makes no rational sense to take on new ones. But in order to, to stop the giveaways to people who are not from Minnesota, uh, I would simply enact a 10-year requirement. You have to be a citizen of Minnesota for 10 years before you can apply for any of the benefits. Um, and one would hope that that would correct 
some of the excesses and the abuses and even some of the fraud that's taking place from people who are literally residents of other states who uh, collect benefits from Minnesota. So that's what I would do. I would think, A, it would, it would contribute to a, a fiscal solvency. It would save money in terms of things going out to people that don't qualify. But B, it would make people think twice about coming to Minnesota. If I come to Minnesota, I have to come ready to contribute and not to take. So um, that's what I would do if I was in a position to do such a thing. And for those of you who are from Minnesota, you might think this is a good thing, a bad thing, or an ugly thing. There's no evil intent. You know, this is not an emotional thing. This is simply a financial thing. Uh, and it's also a moral thing. Um, whether or not you want your particular state to become overrun with individuals who are in your state for the wrong reasons at your expense. So um, it would be, that would be the policy. And if there's any federal programs that have made Minnesota a dumping ground for refugees from other countries, uh, I would stop that pretty quickly. And with all due respect to the brothers and sisters who have come here from other countries seeking a better life, our arms are wide open to you. Um, but if you've come here simply to sign up for everything, uh, there's not really a place for you at this time. Uh, and if you're the federal government and you think that Minnesota is is the place you're going to throw everybody, uh, you would be provided with an equal and opposite reaction that would be uh, obstruction to your agenda. So I hope that helps educate any voter who's considering whether or not they would support me. Uh, I would put the, the people of Minnesota and their needs ahead of the needs of people who are not necessarily from here. And uh, may God bless and keep you. And may God bless and keep the state of Minnesota. And I will see you on my next uh, thing that I record.